With the introduction of Pro Tools 9, you can use any core audio interface as your input and output device for use with Pro Tools. Let's take a look at how you can leverage Mio Console and Mio Console Connect to fully integrate Metric Halo's interfaces within your Pro Tools environment. First, let's take a look at the I.O. setup. For this session, I've created eight mono inputs that are assigned to channels one through eight of my ULN8. I've created a monitoring output that will go to channels 17 and 18 in the ULN8. I'm not using any buses in this session. And I've created 16 inserts, which again are sequential one through 16. That covers how I have the inputs and outputs set up in Pro Tools. Now let's look at the setup within Mio Console. In this session on my master bus, I've inserted Mio Console Connect. This plugin will do two things for me. Number one is it allows me to run Mio Console as a plugin within Pro Tools. So rather than having to bounce back and forth between Pro Tools and Mio Console to change settings, I can make all of the changes that I need to my setup within the Mio console window inside of Pro Tools, which means all of my transport control and control surfaces would continue to work without me tabbing out to another program. The other advantage to using Console Connect is that you can save your console setups with all of your routing and DSP as presets and recall them whenever you need, and I'll show you how that can work to your advantage. What I've done in Mio console is I've taken my eight analog inputs and I've assigned them to FireWire channels 1 through 8, which will route them to the inputs in Pro Tools. I've created an input for Pro Tools on channels 17 and 18, so I'll hear my playback. And all of these are sent to a listen bus so that I can hear the microphones as well as the playback. I've also created another bus called Talent, which is a submix for each analog input as well as my Pro Tools output which goes to a separate analog output, which can feed a headphone amplifier for my performers. Using this talent bus will allow me to do near zero latency monitoring on the digital mixer that's on the 2D card of the ULN8 without incurring the latency of going through Pro Tools. Let's take a look at actually getting some audio into Pro Tools. I'm going to record my microphone onto audio one. If I record enable audio one, you can hear a metallic ringing sort of noise. This is because you're hearing the microphone through the Mio mixer, as well as going through Pro Tools, and that's giving us a comb filter. What I'm going to do is turn that back off, go to Pro Tools preferences, and make sure that the link record and play faders is not checked. What that's going to do is let us set a different playback level and record level on audio one. So with audio one record enabled, I have doubling. And if I pull the record level down to infinity, there's no more doubling. So next, I'm actually going to record some audio into Pro Tools. One, two, two, four, five. Once I take audio one out of record, I can play back and listen to what I've recorded. One, two, two, four, five. Now the problem is that I flubbed the take and did not say three. Since you can't disable software monitoring in Pro Tools, we have to do a little bit of a workaround to be able to do an, a punch in, but it's not that difficult. The first thing I'm going to do is select the bad region of audio, highlight it, and using Command E, separate the bad take as its own region. And with that highlighted, get rid of it. Now I can set my punch in and out points. 
and I'm going to go back to Pro Tools Mixer. What I've done is I've set Audio 2 to the same input as my microphone where I want to do my overdub. And again, when I put that into Record Enable, I get doubling. So I want to pull that down. Now, when I go back to my session, I have pre-roll enabled, so I actually hear before the punch. So what will happen is Pro Tools is going to play back my audio on audio one. I'm going to hear myself through the mixer on the ULN8, and then Pro Tools will record during the punch-in. One, two, three. And I really should have had a post roll there, but not a big deal. So once I've taken audio two out of record enable and cleared the punch in points, I can play that back. One, two, three, four, five. If I'm happy with that, I can grab the region and slide it right back into the empty spot in audio one and now be able to use the same processing or automation for that entire take. Next, I'm going to show you some things you can do during mix down. So I'm going to go open up my Mio console connect and we're going to go from record to mix. As you can see, recalling the demo mix preset completely reconfigured my mixer. So now you still have my microphone that I'm using for narration on input one, but we have DAW channels 2 through 15 and 16, and these are muted because I'm going to use those as inserts. And we have post-insert direct outs routing those channels back into Pro Tools. And I'll show you what you can do with this. Let me clear out Console Connect. So I have some vocal on audio one that I would like to process. So I can go to my inserts and I'm going to send on insert two. So when I call up Mio Mixer again and I play that take for five, you can see that there's audio on DAW two because I've activated insert two. And you can hear it because I'm sending that over FireWire 2 back into Pro Tools. So let me pick out, oh, just for giggles, let's throw on some, some reverb. And now when I play back, one, two, three, four, five. So I can use the inserts within the Pro Tools mixer combined with DAW channels and FireWire returns in the Mio console mixer to turn the Mio console into plug-in insert processing for Pro Tools. And you can do this on any channel or on any bus that you have within Pro Tools itself. Next, let's take a look at using aggregate devices and doing your summing within the Mio console.